Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Aussie Farm in the Philippines. The Aussie baked beans, baby. Yeah. Aussie baked beans. Morning, I. Morning. Grace. Good morning. Stu. Good morning. William. G'day. Well, guess what? As you know, Stu is a chef. Retired. Retired now, he says. So, I said, while you're here, see for a couple of days having the, uh, uh, the new year with us. So, I wanted to make some chicken pies. Now, I've got some meat pies to make up myself during the week, but I thought, what asked you here? Because I can't remember. And I have to go back to the video, so it's easy for a one-on-one. -on -one. So what we're doing is we're gonna make up chicken pies. So we've got, we've got the chickens in here, it's moving away, look. Look at this, absolutely gorgeous, darling. So that's two big mother, huge chickens that's put in water only. Brought to the boil, then simmer. In here is two kilos of flour, and we have a kilo of the, what do you call that? Shortening lard. Shortening lard, vegetable shortening. Great for cooking the potatoes in too, guys. Seriously, absolutely great for raised potatoes. Two kilos of flour, one kilo of lard, and a packet of baking powder. Baking powder. Baking powder, see, I would have put yeast in or something fucking stupid like that. Not baking soda. You know? Not baking soda, no, that's for cleaning. Hey, I. Yes. yes, right. So we'll get this mixed up because we've got to get this in the fridge. So we'll get this one done, then we get all the vegetables done and all that good stuff. And we'll let Chick cook breakfast this morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, so what we've done is we've mixed the, um, the sops, no, the shortening into it. So it's just like a uh, scone mix type thing. It's all mixed into it nicely. So um, now it is cold, cold water to that. And of course, you don't know how much to add because it's as you go on the day with humidity and you just don't know. Plus, you got to remember, is it a full moon or not a full moon? In other planets, all in line. You must remember that, guys. And I was watching intentively. I think we need a bit more. <laughs> bit more? Right, let me get that for you. Right, all mixed together, gorgeous guys. Now look at that, it's just like a, just like a putty. You know that, that kiddies play putty. Look at that. So now we'll put it in the fridge and let it chill out for a little bit. It can relax. Sit down and relax. Right guys, breakfast is out the way, we're all cleaned up and done. Hey Stu. Yes. Right, so what we've done, we pull the chickens out. Look, look at this, look, fall off the bone. Absolutely gorgeous, guys. This is a really good pie recipe, guys. And if you go back, probably about last September, November, we also made chicken pies then. So that's how long it's been. So it's chicken pies, we've got a can of mushies, a can of peas, we've got carrots, we've got onion, and there's something else too, wasn't it? Was there something else? Onion, carrot, that might have been it. I don't know. That's it. Come back to you soon. Let's get this chopped up and peeled. Right guys, so I've got a big half of butter inside here, melting down. What I'm going to be doing is frying these off, the carrots and the onions. So these all go in, they're already done, so do them later. Stu's pulling the chicken apart, and he has a special technique for doing this. Fingers. Fingers. So what we like to do with the pies, is keep the chicken keep the chicken in um, chunks so you've got something to bite on when you're actually eating it. And it's the same when I done a um, I done a Christopher Beecham it was a roast chicken barbecue sauce pizza. And I actually cut I actually cut it with the knife and put it on and uh, it didn't turn out too good because it was one that was too small and it just wasn't working. So the next one I did I did it in flakes, exactly the same as what Stu's doing now. And the pizza turned out very tasty. It's very moist and tasty. The chicken wasn't dried out. So don't cut it up with a knife. Use your fingers. Right, so we've cooked the um, vegetables off. So now let's put in the flour, about half a cup of flour, whatever it is, just to soak up all the butter and all that stuff. And now Stu's added the ladles of the stock, this lovely chicken stock. And he said the secret is bring it up to the boil before you add the next one. It's because you can tell the thick, it's thick. Was it? It's thick when it's... Once it's boiling, it won't get no thicker than what it is now. Mm -hmm. So if you keep pouring stock in and then bring it up to the boil, it could end up being too thin. Ah, with you. So you just sort of add it gradually. 
So that's the hint, guys, is add it to it. When it starts to bubble, that is the thickness, as in it's that. It's very hard to get the stock out if you've added too much, so you're better off adding a little bit at a time. Ah, so the idea there is when it starts to boil, when you're adding it, then you add the next bit until you come down to the consistency or the thickness that you want. Don't add it all at once. You can't take it out. Same as salt and pepper, a little bit at a time. A little bit. So there you go, guys, look at that. We're getting it. We've still got the chicken over here yet. So this is this is the what, what do you call it? The white sauce. The yeah, the proper name's bechamel. Well, that's a nice word. I like that word. Big word. I might use that as myself sometimes. So there you bechamel. go. Bechamel. And it's just a white sauce with nothing in it. But we've got bechamel here now with vegetables in for the base of it. Ah, oh, we've got so, so you the can basic white sauce is called bechamel. Bechamel. So that's normally like um, half half butter, half. Flour. flour, mix that up, then add your milk to that, and yeah. then you can add whatever. Whatever, as a base yep. for lasagnas. That's the. Mm. Yep, yep, lasagnas. Yep. Well. Yep. We used to have that nice fish with the minted sauce. I forget what they call that. Fish with the white mint sauce or something like that. I can't think what they call that. Bloody yummy though, I remember that. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Stu. So, what we do now, we've got our completed. Um, white sauce with the vegetables in and we'll now add the chicken and the secret with this is not to stir it too much uh, so break, to break, the break it down you just sort of fold it over so all you want to do guys is just give it a light mix so that the sauce is mixed onto the chicken don't be rough with it okay it's not a sex night down in the park or anything like that just nice and gentle and the chicken pieces will be covered and that's all you want to do you want to keep them whole like that. We'll give it a final mix just before we put it into the pie dishes. Yummy. Sorted. So easy it is, guys. So easy it is. I said next week I'll be making my world famous, in my own mind, mince pies, beef mince pies. Next week. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right, so we're making the pastries now, guys. So all our all our fillings are all sitting there chilling out. The stock we're going to keep, all the bones I've kept for chick, with all the chicken bits that are on those. They're all kept, everything's in the freezer. So now we've got the super duper roller. Now what the super duper roller is, I'm gonna put the box here. So it's one of these things. So you've got your cake baking tool. Now it's got all different size um, washers that go on the end of it. And with that, those different size washers, you have a thickness, so you can have 2 mil, 3 mil, 6 mil, 10 mil, whatever size you want, and um, you just change them over, and this is these ones here. So for the mentally challenged, they've got 10 millimetre on this side, and if you turn it over, it's got 3 8. So uh, you pick any thickness you want, and if you have a look at this here, you can see how it's nicely risen. Not bad, is it? Hey, Jesus has got some good hands on this pastry, guys, I'll tell you. Very good hand. So we're going to make a couple of large chicken pies when it's um, a couple more than chicken eye. And we're going to do the small ones, which is this size that we got. Have a look at that. Absolutely beautiful, meaty, tangy. So like I said, I just, I just can't wait to get my beef ones. I love the beef, mince Australian meat pie. Yummy. All right, time for the filling, guys. Have a look at this. Yummy. We're going to have a lot of pies. So fill up that bloody freezer, guys. Fill up that freezer. And what we don't use on the, uh, all this will get used up today. And if we have any of this left over, then we can freeze that. There's no problem at all. For the beef pies. I love pies, mate. Aussies love their pies. They love their dim sims as well. And their sausage rolls. I love sausage rolls. So is there any hint for the viewers, mate, on um, your edges? No, uh, just trim them up with a knife like this or you can sit it on the table and go around. That's how I like this because the weight of the pastry pulls down and it hangs away from the... Mmm. Mmm. That's that and then we just... You can do this now with a fork but I tend to like to do it with my fingers. Oh the push one, yep. yeah. Crimp it. Crimping. Crimping. I know I tried it, but it didn't look much like yours though, I'm afraid. Yeah, but I've got women's fingers. Oh, there you go. Come and put them on this for me. Your hand's clean. Yeah. So these ones here, we call these the second hand ones now. Now, we've, as you know, with pastry, you can't use, you can't 
Keep rolling it and playing with it, okay? It'll just get tighter. Tighter? Jeez, I wish my missiles were like that, mate. The more you played with it, the more she got tight. So what he does with this one, this is all your trimmings, he'll just give it one push together and that'll be a base for It'll the be next a one. base for the small pies. So we'll keep that aside ready for the small pies. And you can only recycle it once, you're saying? Yeah, once really. Then yeah. it's shit. Then it's not it, worth it, get rid of it. It's like fucking well hard, otherwise. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I think I must have had a large one. Right, have a look at this, guys. So what Stu does, because he's very talented being a chef, of course, is puts the pastry inside, lays it down, then gets a ball. Bit of the old pastry. Bit of, bit of a ball from the old pastry, just use that and just uses that to push it into a spot. Yeah. What a Trevor little kick. What a Trevor little dicky he is. <laughs> hey, a clever little dicky. What do you think, I? So, of course, I is always interested in seeing different things on Western cooking. So she'll always be on hand to look, see what is happening. Plus, we make her do all the dishes as well. Jogla! Right, guys, so we've got two large ones. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the pie ones. So this is the, the size of those guys. Look, absolutely gorgeous, darling. And we've got two pasties as well. How's that? And we had a little bit of leftover that we can put into something God knows what later. So this is all going well. So we're going to stop and have some coffee. What, what's today, I? Tim Tams? Okay then, Tim Tams it is. Right, so we've egg washed all the tops down. Everything's all done, ready to go. Just waiting for the temperature to come up on the big oven. And we just load it up on the big oven. Yeah, they will bugger it, I tell you. It's going to be good, guys. And like I said, I'll make the um, meat ones during the week because I like meat pies they're a good size container these so we told Stu where to go tell him where to go go on fuck off go on get out of here tell him where to go it's on his way home so we can call in and get these ones as well so they make a really nice pie yeah, right guys so we've got them all in the oven look at that you Whoa. bloody beauty I like it see before we I didn't have this um wasn't using this one because all the all the dials got cleaned off so it sort of like made it hard. So I've been playing around with it. I know this is the temperature one, this one here. And this one is either top, bottom, rotisserie or something like that. I'm not sure. But um, I put it on the test the other day. The other day, mate. And it actually come up to nice 200 degrees Celsius. So I was quite happy with that. It's sort of like, that will do fine. Still not enough for um, pizza, not hot enough for the pizza. But um, it still works. And how, how, where did we buy that? November. 2010. November 2010. November 2. November, even knows the fucking dates. <laughs> but she forgets her wedding anniversary. Ah, I saw that in my video. Oh, okay, okay. I have the receipt in okay. the okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> right, guys, this is coming along good. I've just pulled these out now. Look at that. Oh, my God, I tell you. I tell you, Charlie Brown, this is gorgeous. So I've moved the bottom ones up to the top and just give them another five minutes. Oh, Stu, thank you very much, mate. Thank you very much, Stu. They're bloody lovely pies. Lovely pies. It's good to have friends to help you out, guys. It's good to have friends. Okay, so this is the end product. Have a look at this. Some bloody good pies, guys. Too much Stu being a chef. It's good to have him. It's good to have him, I tell you. So I'll let these cool down for the afternoon, and then um, I'll pack them all up. Back in, pack them down, and I'll be like, gorgeous. Well, thanks for watching us today, guys. This is um, our cooking at William's Homestead Kitchen, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And share, subscribe, or buy. Remember, hit that like button. It really helps us out. Thank you very much, guys. Catch you later.